Wrestle Kingdom 15, Night 2. We are SOS Wrestling Network. I'm your boy, the pro wrestling fly god, Stardust Yaku, International Sick. Man, you know what it is. Benzo Miyahara, I got so many damn nicknames. I forget them all. Wrestle Kingdom Night 2, we might as well get to this. I'm not doing no, pre no pre-show shit because I didn't get up for the pre-show. Only got up for the actual show, the actual main events that went on. So if you want to get some pre-show action, you're not going to find it here, unfortunately. So without any further ado, let's get into this shit right here. First match we had, no time limit. King of Pro Wrestling 2021 is a four-way match. We had Bushi, champion of the goddamn universe. Actually, his belt was not on the line tonight, so I was pretty happy about that. Chase Owens, Bala Fale, and I guess you want to say the reigning, you know, defending provisional King of Pro Wrestling champion, Toru Yanu. Toru Yanu actually got the victory, and before I even go into the, before I even get into the match, probably, if not one of the best things, if the best thing about the 1-5 Tokyo Dome show is undoubtedly it probably peaked with Bushi getting his own solo dome entrance. And that's something I completely forgot was going to happen here. Totally loved it. So they could just sent me away right after this, right after Bushi made his entrance right here. But Toriyona got the victory over him, pinned him about 7 minutes and 34 seconds. Uh, ultimately, when I think about the King of Pro Wrestling 2021 or whatever the year, Toriano should just hold that fucking stupid trophy for the rest of his life. Ultimately, who really cares? I mean, who really cares about the King of Pro Wrestling trophy? It's entertaining. It's fun. But at the end of the day, does it really mean anything? I don't think any of us think so. Next match we got is actually for something that does mean something. It does mean a lot. We have the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title match coming up second. We have the 62nd champions, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, El Desperado, looking to make their second defense against... Master Wado and Raizuke Taguchi, I guess, an offshoot of Taguchi Japan. So, you got the Pinche Loco, 13 minutes, 20 seconds right here. Under El Desperado and Yoshinobu Kanemaru able to successfully retain their IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team title belts. And honestly, I'm really happy that these guys kept the belt here because this match was really good. Happy they didn't do a title change. I want Despi and I want Kanemaru to hold on to these belts a little bit longer. I know people are wanting Desperado to maybe jump up to the upper echelon of the junior heavyweight division. In my mind, he's already there. He can be a tag team champion and still be in the upper echelon of the junior heavyweight division because it's booked a little differently than the heavyweight division, as we can see. So, like I said, we got Kanemaru, El Desperado, defending their titles for the second time right here, which moves us on to our next title match. And to this point, probably the match of the night right here. Maybe the match of the night, depending on how you feel about the other matches we had. We had for the never open weight championship. We had Shingo Takagi. 31st champion, attempting to make his first defense against a man who's been a thorn in his side for all of 2020, Jeff Cobb right here. As we all know, as, we, as I've talked about here on the show, Jeff Cobb pinned him in the G1 Climax. Jeff Cobb was the one to pin Shingo Takagi in the World Tag League when the Empire beat Los Angobardamas de Japón. So we got Shingo having to ask the question, can he beat Jeff Cobb right here? And... He beat Jeff Cobb with the last of the dragon about 21 minutes and 11 seconds right here. So this match was really, really fucking good, guys. Shingo was going to get all the credit here, but Jeff Cobb looked like a zillion bucks in this match. Talk about a heel turn, turning your whole New Japan career around, and that's what that heel turn has absolutely done for Jeff Cobb. Brilliant work right here. Brilliant work by both of these guys, man. Go out of your way to check this match out. This match was a fucking banger. Speaking of fucking bangers, man, we have a special singles match coming up next. We have Cold Skull himself, Sonata, taking on the King of Darkness, Evil. We all know the backstory. New Japan Cup, Evil turns on Sonata, turns on Los Angobernamas, they have on the whole. And he's pretty bit much been dismissive of Sonata the whole year. He's attacked him here and there. But Sonata, in the recent weeks, has been fiery trying to get an Evil. And we got Sonata, to my surprise, defeating E1 about 23, 23 minutes and 40 seconds with a rounding body press, man. E1 is not a rules. All you nerds can get bent who don't feel that way. This match was fucking awesome. If you don't think it was, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I don't even know what to fucking tell you. This match was the shit. It was really good. Go check it out. Sonata Evil. And it gelled really well, I think, because they're former tag team partners. I think that's why the continuity worked really well and the congruency worked really well. So fucking bang of a match right here. Next we got for the IWG, or penultimate match of the show, by the way, for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, we have Taji Ishimori attempting to make his first defense against Hiromu Takahashi right here, and he was he actually failed at making his defense. We got Hiromu 
defeating Taiji Ishimori in about 25 minutes and 31 seconds to time bomb two. We get Hiromu Takahashi becoming the new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. So this match really did fucking rock. And this was really, really good right here. Uh, I maybe thought that Ishimori should have probably got the victory. But I see why Hiromu Takahashi got the victory here. Another solid fucking match, man. I thought this match where it was really, 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 really good. And yeah, just go out of your way to watch this match. They did a lot of stuff in here I can't really talk about because my words would not do it justice. So, Romu Takahashi gets the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. And now we're on to the main event of the show, which is kind of, I don't want to say controversial, but we have for the double championships, the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championship. Still pains me to say this. Kota Ibushi attempting to make his first defense against Jay White here, who had the G1 briefcase, who he actually beat at Power Struggle for the G1 briefcase. So we get Kota Ibushi defeating Jay White in about 48 minutes, 5 seconds. No, it wasn't about, it was 48 minutes, 5 seconds. Be it a Kamagoye. Kota Ibushi successfully defends his IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championships. It's still weird for me to say that. I still feel like he's a pretender to the throne, but I'm not even going to get into all that right now. So uh, I'll just give the man his flowers and give him his accolades. This is a really damn good match. I'll give them his credit right here. This was one of those matches where 10 minutes in, I really didn't like it. And then by the 20-minute mark, they started to hook me in. And then about 30 minutes, okay, I'm like, I'm really fucking digging this match. So ultimately, it was really awesome really awesome match it kind of dragged for a bit to be honest if you ask me it's probably like maybe the third or fourth match i liked on these both of these two shows i can maybe throw a couple other matches in there above it i definitely like the bushi naito more than this i can almost arguably say i liked i definitely like okada osprey more than this I almost like okan tanahashi more and i like dangerous techers versus god more. so there are other matches i like on wrestle kingdom 15 more than this main event so it was what it was but that's a testament to really great shows we had from night one and night two, man. And after Ibushi successfully defends his title, we get who coming out to challenge him? The Cold Skull himself, Sonata. Unbeknownst to me, Sonata said if he was going to, if he was victorious against Evil, I guess a million times this dude said he was going to come out challenging for the belts, no matter who the champion was. So I did not know that. And we got Sonata get ready to challenge Kota Ibushi. Will it be at New Beginning? Which I'm guessing it probably will be. Uh, that's going to be interesting. And if, if when we go for, forward with Kota Ibushi's title reign, uh, with them throwing Sonata him so early, I'm thinking Kota Ibushi is going to be hard-pressed to find credible challengers here. We'll, of course, talk about that more as the days and weeks goes on. But having Sonata just challenge him right after the bat, I know Sonata said he was going to challenge for it, but Sonata, he did just beat a heavyweight and intercontinental champion. So I guess that's kind of credible. Kind of credible. That is pretty credible in the eyes of the fans and in my eyes. So... Uh, we'll see if it's going to be a new beginning. I know they have a Castle Attack show coming up here. I'm not sure the exact date, but guys, you know what it is, man. Pro Wrestling Fly Guy in the motherfucking building, man. Start a Shiyaku, dude. Hey, man, you know we ain't stopping, dude. Even if Naito lose, you already know I got to come with y'all with that hotness, man. This fucking art that we bringing out here because we are the almighty SOS Wrestling Network. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. They try to stop us, man. They can't stop us, man. We, we, we can't be stopped. We can't even be contained, man. It's... It's on and popping, dude. I'm excited right now. And speaking of being excited, I'm just so amped, so charged up. I'm about to take me a fucking nap because it is still in the a.m. And your boy is done watching Wrestle Kingdom. Getting ready for New Year's Dash tomorrow morning. Be on the lookout for that, y'all. Until y'all see me later. Hey, we still, we still tranquilo.